Hey everybody, my name is Avery. Today I'm coming out with a quick video. I'm going to be talking about, um, I guess how Terraria can uh, show everything in the game. So, uh, everything about it is pretty simple. There's this video right here, how does Terraria handle thousands of tiles. And um, actually, I actually really like the video. I like this channel a lot, Diggy Digger. And um, But he got some stuff wrong, which I mean, I don't really care. Like uh, The video is pretty entertaining, it's interesting. But I guess I had watched his video a few years ago, it came out in 2017, and I had enjoyed it, and I had learned some stuff from it, uh, just about um, not exactly just about Terraria, but just about uh, like displaying worlds and whatnot. He didn't use all the terms correctly, but like he said, there's still like a starting point to learn about it. Some people in the comments called him out for saying stuff was wrong, and then some people just were I don't know I guess kind of rude about it, explaining about what was wrong. So this video is kind of showcasing how Terraria can actually um, handle thousands of tiles. It's not the exact implementation of how they do it. It's uh, pretty similar, at least from everything I've read. So maybe this video is going to be wrong as well, but uh, I, get, I think it'll be a little bit closer. I made a little clone right here, and it's going to run. And it's to generate a world. The world basically is no generation at all. It's a... Uh, as you can see, okay, it's these trees right here. It just generates the trees and the grass tiles and the stone. This map size right here, it's the size, um, uh, it's the large size. It's, I have it up here. It's, uh, this large. It's 16,000 by 4,000 for the size of the map. It's all loaded. Um, there's no actual generation. <coughs> So it didn't take too long to make it. I mean, it generates the world, but like it doesn't really do too many calculations for that. And there's two maps. Um, I have this article right here. It kind of talks about uh, a little bit more about the world. And I'll have this in the description as well, I guess, if you're interested. But there's, you know, there's the map with all your tiles or blocks. And then there's your wall map. And in the video, he talked about how these tiles are stored. Um, he was kind of comparing them to like an object like in any game. He's using a unity So it kind of makes it a little more complicated. This is just using a I mean, it's not even I guess it's like an engine just to do it. It's just some short SDL uh, stuff to display everything um, I'm using structures for every tile. I know One person that was commenting and saying his video is wrong was kind of making it seem like the tile was only like an integer but for when I was looking at the tile doesn't seem to just be an integer. It looks like it stores a few informations, a few information other than just like what a ID it is. So for mine, I just had it store what kind it is, and I just had it default by t uh, sky, the frame number, and that's because um, I have it use the frame number to figure out which frame it should be. So like this one's a stone, but like these are all stone as well. This one's dirt, these are all dirt. So but this isn't like the actual like tile setup for Terraria. This is probably a little bit more complex. Where I think some people are saying they use this blob tile set, which kind of just makes it so things can like have edges around other blocks, such as this for example. You're able to see like, these are all the same grass tile. They have different edges around everything. But, uh, and then I also had it, <coughs> sorry about that, I also had it uh, save it was active. Um, I don't really know exactly what the point of this is. I guess it just says that the block like is doing something or if it exists. And that was kind of just something that I talked about in this article. So I just have it do that, and then I have, you know, the actual world map, and then I have the walls map, and I have all the map sizes, and I just set them all to this large one you can see right there. And then tile size is 16. My movement speed is probably not the exact same movement speed. I have it set to like 8 pixels every single frame. And it's around 60 frames a second. Uh, generating the world, it just generates a bunch of dirt and a bunch of stone. And then it places some trees. Uh, and then it generates the walls as well in the background. Um, I just have a check for some movement. Like I said, it was that's the speed right there. And then... I think he would call it cooling in his video. I don't really care what you call it. I don't see anything wrong with it. Someone was trying to say it's only 3D. But basically, you only want to draw stuff that's going to be in your screen. Because, I mean, it's going to be massive. So, 
instead of just like looping through the whole map. Um, as you see, this is the map right here. It's a 1D array, but I kind of have it look like it. Um, it knows the X and Y coordinates in the map, and this is how you do that. I talked about this in some other videos as well. But I have to figure out the start of like, if the map's way bigger than this, but it knows like where the camera should be right here, and it knows where the camera should end, and it only draws everything in between that camera link. So it's kind of just what the start X and end X, and same thing with the Y does. It's just trying to calculate like what should be drawn. But at the same time, you're only drawing the part of the screen, but it needs to update the whole entire world at once. So even though this is the only thing being drawn, we're going through every single tile. Uh, is it right? Yeah, we're going through every single tile. Um, no, sorry, that's the wrong spot. Right here, we're going through every single tile to um, actually update everything. There's not that much stuff being updated in my version. Um, you know, an actual game is going to have a, a ton of stuff. Uh, but right now, I just have the trees growing. Um, there's no height limits to the tree or anything. I literally just have it randomly decide just to grow. I didn't make any sort of system for that. But the trees aren't just growing right here on the screen. They're growing... I mean, this is going to go pretty far. They're growing as many trees as there are. And you can kind of wonder, like... His video kind of makes it seem like it could be something difficult to do, like how you draw on the map, how you move it around, and how you also have an, all the trees in the whole entire world draw. And, you know, if I just had to just do it in that order, it wasn't working, like <laughs> that just lags the whole thing. But I was just using a, I don't know, expert with this, so I'm sure someone's going to say I'm not doing this the greatest way. But I just used multi-threading. So I just have a thread running for the game itself, and a thread running to update the world just always and that's kind of just the basics of it uh, the game doesn't have any chunks it's not you know amazingly big that you need to have chunks everything's just right in the memory all the structures are generated into that array and they're just right there just for you to access them just uh, two integers and a boolean that are in them it's as uh, simple as that uh, if you guys are interested in making something similar to this I'll I think I'll probably come out with like a video explaining like how to do all this stuff along with tons of other features that you would find in Terraria. I mean basically just like making a Terraria clone. If you guys are interested I'll probably do that. Um, my example right now is C++ and SDL2. I'm thinking maybe I'll do it in Go. So let me guys know if you guys are what you guys are interested in because maybe I'll change my mind based on what you guys say. Um, also someone mentioned like the world uh, here, I'll pull up the quote. He said, um, There are not theoretical infinite tiles in Terraria. Each map size is a hardcore height and width. Um, technically, it's true. Like, yeah, there's there's a set, like, size. And, um, for everything, and there's, like, not chunks. And also, I guess, like, going off of that before I keep talking. It, there's kind of like parameters where it knows like uh, where the world service is or where the rock layer is and the underworld is. So like, but they're not chunks. They're just like coordinates just saying like where it should be at. Kind of just how I have like, you know, I have this one right here and I have this layer right there. It's kind of like that, but like it's a little bit different. So you can figure out all the actual layers in the game. But um, yeah, the person kind of called him out saying that like, no, it couldn't be infinite. But... I guess like um, it's not infinite and like it's not designed to be infinite but at the same time it kind of it really is I mean if you have I'm not talking about all the procedural generation in this video but it's growing off of a seed and it's like you use the seed to generate random noise or some sort of random values to generate the hills um, decide which biome those hills are going to be in, uh, manipulate those hills, generate random caves underneath them, <clears throat> and uh, the way that's designed like works infinitely. Like Minecraft's, not, I mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> Terraria is not designed to do that, but the concept of it does work infinitely. And if someone were to like mod it, there's definitely a way of doing it, and there's definitely a way of like just with this right here that I can make it so it would be infinite. 
And part of that could be using chunks, uh, part of that could be using other things, but um, the whole idea of it is theoretically infinite. And uh, maybe someone's going to say that's wrong as well, but it, it's definitely not. I mean, because it's just, the whole thing's randomly generated anyways, and you can randomly generate something infinitely. Um, hopefully this video is, I guess, interesting. Uh, if you guys haven't watched this original video, I don't really care that much that it has some wrong stuff. It's really interesting. It's a bit wise. It's part of his bit wise series where you can get a bit wiser. It's, um, uh, they're really interesting. He covers a lot of topics that people might want to know about, including this procedural generation one. And once again, I said, like I said, if you guys are interested in tutorial doing something like this, uh, just let me know. And thanks again for watching. Leave a like. And if you guys are new, feel free to subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.